What's up, AFL Fantasy Freak fam? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new around here, I'm Jacob, aka the AFL Fantasy Freak. In this video, guys, I'm going to be going over round seven trade talk, which guys you should be looking to target this week, along with which rookies I think are the best to bring in. Starting off with the rookies, my number one target this week, guys, is Jai Farah. So he's coming in at 304k, minus eight break even. The things that I like about Farah the most are the fact that he has good job security. He looks like he's well and truly entrenched in the Gold Coast 22. Gold Coast are a team that Love to bring the ball out of defence. They chip it around. There's lots of points back there. We've seen with other players such as Bose, Ellis, Lukosius, Markov. These guys have been scoring well all season. And so it's a perfect environment for a rookie like Farah to thrive in. He's shown that he has the scoring potential, putting up two decent scores in a row. And they also play Collingwood this week, who give up a stack of points to midfielders and defenders. So I expect him to score well again. If he goes and scores 65 this week, he's projected to go up another 40 to 50k. So I think this is the week you jump on board if you don't already own him. If you can't get him this week, it's probably too late. So now's the time to get him. You won't be disappointed. The second guy that I like, my number two pick, is Devin Robertson. Up until this point, I've been pretty shaky on what his job security looks like, but with Lockie Neal now out of the side for a long period, Devin's job security increases. He could potentially see even more inside midfield time. The scoring ability is there. And he's also another option that looks to make some coin. You can play him on field. And he also has the added positivity of him being a round 13 by player. My third option is Martin Frederick from Port Adelaide. I think Martin brings a uniqueness to the side that not many other players offer. He has great speed. He cuts those aggressive kicking lanes well. I think that Port will look to go to him when coming out of the back half. So I think that his job security is pretty good for at least a few weeks. And I expect that even with Pow Pepper and Bonner to come into the side, I expect him to hold. I think players like Miles Bergman are more at risk of losing their spot in the side. He does have the round 12 buy, which is a negative, but he's nice and cheap if you need the cash. To get an upgrade, he's the guy I'd be going to this week. My number four pick is R2 Bossom of Veluji. There's slight queries with Aaron Hall coming back into the side. It probably negatively affects him, and so I think his scoring will be around that 50 to 60 mark. He's probably someone that you can play on the field, although I'd prefer to have him on the bench. He's a little bit cheaper than Farrar or Dev. So if you need that extra 30 to 40k, he could be the guy that you go to. But I think that he's certainly a rung below those guys on the pecking order. Outside of those four, I probably wouldn't be looking to target anyone this week. We do have Riley Collier-Dawkins playing along with Poulter. I wouldn't be jumping on these guys straight away. We saw what happened with Jay Rantel last week. He disappointed first up, and now he looks like he could be out of the side. So I made the mistake of going early on him. I think that with these guys coming through from now on, we should just give them a week, see what their role looks like, and therefore get an idea of what their job security looks like before getting on board. If we take a look at defenders, I think that there's a lot of options in defense this year. We've seen a lot of players score well in defense. Players like Laird, Mills, these types, I probably wouldn't be looking at them if you don't already own them. 
The reason being is they're very popular amongst the top sides, and therefore, if you bring them in now, you're not going to get an edge or any advantage over those teams. They've risen in price, and they're priced around where they're going to be, meaning there's not really that much upside. Take Callum Mills, for example. He's priced at 104 now. He's probably not going to average much more than that for the year. Therefore, there's no value there. So some of the guys that I would be looking at is Jake Lloyd. He's now down price eight points below his starting price. He comes in similarly priced to Mills. And with a couple of nice games in Collingwood and Frio to come, I think that he's one that I'd be looking to target now. Dan Houston is another guy that I think's underpriced. If we take that 32 score out where he did get injured, he's averaged 103 this year, but he's priced at 92. So you've got 10 points of upside there. He's one that's ready to be picked. Jump on board now if he fits your buy structure. He is round 12 buy, which is a negative, but he's certainly right for the picking. Dyson Heppel is another guy. Nice and cheap. If you're struggling to get the cash to get up to a Lloyd, for example, he's one that I could go with. He's round 13 by, which is a positive. They seem hard to come by at the moment. And he should rise up in cash nicely so that when you do hit the buys, you can potentially sideways him to a more proven premium type. Similarly priced is Luke Ryan who, if you watched my last Trade Talk video, I was quite bullish on. It looks like Brennan Cox is in doubt for this week, and with the injuries to other tools in Alex Pierce and Joel Hamling, I think that we could see Ryan go back to playing a more defensive role, which probably hinders his scoring ability, so I'm less bullish on Ryan now. You'll have to wait and see what the Frio team looks like, but he's probably one I would tread with caution for now. As the next guy on the list is Christian Salem. He's been getting it done. He's shown that he's got a big ceiling. He's scored over 110 three times with a big 140 plus score in there also. Nobody owns him, so he's very unique. I think that he's bordering a top six spot. He's the number one guy coming out of defense for Melbourne. He plays in a strong side, which is a positive. So he's one that I'd be looking to target if you're looking for a premium and you're looking for a point of difference. I'm going to keep this video nice and short, guys. During the week, I posted a video on what to do with Josh Dunkley, Dustin Martin, Lockie Neal, so if you do have one of those guys and you want to find out what options I think are the best replacements, I go over all the midfielders and all the forwards that I think are relevant. I'll link that video up in the cards above so you guys can go check that out. A few other names that I'd be looking to consider or just watch to see what their role looks like this week along with a couple guys that have high break-evens that I'd be looking to potentially target in another one to two weeks. These guys include Lockie Hunter, who I expect will probably go back to playing on a wing role with Josh Dunkley out of the side. It means that Bailey Smith will likely play more inside time. He's also another one you could potentially look at just to see if he does get those inside minutes, along with Patrick Lipinski, he's nice and cheap at 530k, he's got the ability there, he's mid only which is a downside but he's certainly one to monitor just to see what his role looks like. Jordan Ridley is a guy that looks like he's going to be a top 6, he was averaging 110 before his 15 injury affected score, he should be back this week, he looks like he's going to be ripe to pick in 2 weeks time. So keep him highly on your watch list. Caleb Daniel has been in poor form. He's played out of position or he's lost that role he had at the start of the year. But he's also super cheap now. So could potentially be looking to pick him up at 570k. See how he goes this week against Richmond. But he's certainly cheap and we do know what he is capable of. 
Josh Dacos, while he didn't score huge last week, did see way more time in at CBAs with the limited options that Collingwood have. So if this role is to continue, he could see an uptick in scoring, and I am interested in him as an option, potentially. He's very cheap, and he does now have forward status. Another one that could potentially see some more inside time, but I'm not quite sure on, is Hugh McCluggage. Regardless, he's been in super form. He's priced at 750k odd, so you're paying top dollar for him, but he could provide as a great unique option for you if you're looking for a point of difference. And if he does see more inside time, his scoring is only going to get better. These are just a few guys that I would keep my eye on this week and potentially target in the next one to two weeks. As for what I'm looking to do this week, guys, I don't have Dunkley or Dusty or Neil, so I'm in a quite luxurious position. And whilst I never really advocate for the double downgrade, I think I'm going to use this week to fix my bench up. So I'll be doing two rookie trades most likely. Another reason behind this is a lot of the competition is going to be sideways trading this week. So I'm not really losing out on not improving my team by upgrading. And if I do decide to do one down and one up, I can't get to an option that I'm happy with or that suits my buy structure. So I'm looking to bring in Jai Farah along with Frederick, but I could also potentially bring in Dev Robertson instead. I'm undecided and that's just gonna come down to what happens at teams when they drop on Friday night. If you guys have enjoyed this video, you wanna see more AFL fantasy content, make sure to smash the subscribe button guys. Give this video a like if you've enjoyed this content and comment down below what types of videos you guys want me to make. I'm interested to see your guys' opinions on what type of content you would like to see. Good luck this round, guys. And until next time, keep climbing up the ranks. Look, I'm about my pledge, bitch. I'm decked up on blue bills. And I won't stop until the cash pit look like fall leaves in a bag fill. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bullshit. Quick to save my peace. I'm so after school special. She